Hello. Hi. How you doing? Uh, my name's Sam. I'm a musician. I write songs like, you know, like, ooh, baby, I love you. Tell me, tell me, tell me, shake it down. Let's go a little crazy. Come on, come on, down, down. You know what I'm talking about? I write songs for me. I write songs for other people. That's kind of like what I do on a day-to-day -day basis, near enough. <laughs> you know, you can imagine it. You're sitting there playing guitar. Oh, I don't want to play guitar today. I'm going to put that down. I want to play on a keyboard. But the problem is, I'm a massive procrastinator. <laughs> Like, I don't know, do you know what procrastination is here, right? Procrastination. Put your hand up if you think you're a procrastinator. Like, oh, that's, some of you people aren't honest. Like, that's the thing. Some people aren't honest here. Because, I mean, unless you've got your um, discipline down to a T, procrastination can sometimes take over your life. But it's how you work with this procrastination. Okay, but let's, let's place out a scenario. So, like... Um, Ooh, ooh, I'm just gonna flip. Oh, that's, my, that's the first word. That's my logo. I didn't procrastinate from that. But uh, you just sit down, you're on a keyboard, you're like, I'm gonna write a song. You know, it's gonna be good. I'm gonna write it for like, try and, try and get it to share. You know, she's like, I believe in love, fifty love, all that stuff. But you're like, you know what this keyboard could do with? Hmm. I know. Why don't we give it some Furbies? I don't know. I just saw so like my mind went off on a tangent, and then I ended up making a Furby organ. This is. It sounds like what it looks like. <laughs> basically, yeah. So it's like. Oh, it's like. But like basically. <laughs> like the problem is, is I just can't stop myself when I've got this idea and I've got this really important thing that I've got to do. Like I'm just not going to do that. I'm going to do that. Like, let's just get to another scenario here. You jump on the keyboard. You're like, right, I'm going to write a song. I'm going to make it Beatles style. You know, it's going to be like the Beatles meets uh, uh, the, the beat Beethoven. And you're like, <laughs> that's a bit of an odd one. But like, you're like, yeah. uh, you know what this keyboard needs? <laughs> Flamethrowers. That's right. And I've made a flamethrowing organ. It's another keyboard, but instead... Of, so imagine like you've got a church organ, yeah, but instead of gas going through the pipes, being like hoot, 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 you've got flammable gas. And then at the end of the flammable gas, it gets ignited and it goes like, Wah! it kind of sounds like Henry, not Henry the Hoover, uh, what's that, what's that, Thomas the Tank Engine? Sort of sounds like Thomas the Tank Engine. It looks better than it sounds, I can promise you that. But the thing is with that one actually, is like, I had the idea and um, I'd never work with gas or anything like that. Fire was something that I'd never done. I was quite nervous at trying it, but there was just, I had a tunnel vision. I was like, I don't need to do this. And um, <clears throat> I found out that my mum and dad were going on holiday, yeah? And their house was completely free. <laughs> like, for two whole weeks, two whole weeks. So I, I got in my car with a load of tools, I just drove over to where they live, which is about two or three hours away, stopped, didn't tell them. I was like, hey, Sam, how you doing? Is everything okay? Are you all right? And I was like, yeah, I'm having a great time. I'm at home just chilling. <laughs> but no, no, I was not chilling. I was on their driveway um, kind of doing tests. I like, had um, organ pipes, yeah? And um, uh, the problem with organ pipes is they're like a, a tin lead composite. Don't eat it, you'll get lead poison, it's dangerous stuff. But like, the problem with it is I found you put, you, put, you put gas through it, it works for a couple of seconds, it goes But then it starts melting. And it goes like And it's just like, they went Look really sad and it was like a sad church organ, poor thing. So like, so then I decided I needed to think of another plan, plan B. That, that's the wrong way, B round, it doesn't matter. I'm going off on a tangent there. But like, so I decided to go to the local plumbing shop and just get a load of copper pipe. It wasn't very cheap, but I needed to do it and you know, it just had to happen. But basically, that was made from everything from my local plumber's shop. So if you want to make a flamethrower organ and you have no knowledge in gas or anything, it's fine. Just look it up on YouTube and you're fine. Just, just, just be careful though, be very safe, take precautions and don't blame me. Please.
God. And uh, like, for instance, I've made, uh, oh, this is fidget spinners. Like I, was, I remember I was posting a package in the, uh, in the post office and I was like, you know what I'm going to do? I, uh, there was next to me, there was a load of fidget spinners, you know, the new craze of the kids, you know, they love these fidget spinners, yeah? I was like, okay, I'll get one. And I was like, I'm going to make a musical instrument. And uh, so it's just like, I love it. I just made a little thing. But this is one of many. I kind of make a YouTube video every week on like, like an idea. I've got plenty of like, a big list and it's just whatever the, fu whatever the fudge, you know, I want to do next. Um, ooh, ooh, there we go. This one is called the Flames in Your Face 5000. See all that stuff there? Like, um, so this is a module, if you can't tell, after I learned how to do the flame throwing thing, I, I kind of decided to do it a bit more. <laughs> it's like really fun. But like the, all of that stuff around it is um, a modular synthesizer that I've built over the last three or four years. This is the kind of thing that I use and I tour with. Uh, so instead of using a computer to make electronic sort of electronic music, I decided to spend a long time learning how to make it how it used to be made, like analog synthesizers, and then tr drive it around Europe in my van and play gigs with it. It's totally, totally, you like, it's, you could just use it with a computer, but you know, that's just not fun. And this sounds a lot better, I think, but like, I take that on tour. I don't take the flamethrower because it's the flames in your face. I, I like my eyebrows, you know. Uh, and, then, and then, oh, here's another flame one. This one isn't musical, but that's Henry the Hoover. See? Hey! He's a flamethrower! <laughs> you never notice that. So instead of uh, Henry the Hoover sucking up all of the dust, he's just going to obliterate the household chores down to a fine black dust on the floor. That's it. But you know, so not everything. Just whatever my tangents take me, I'm just like, let's, let's try this. And then I've also built a lot of these. This is a synthesizer bike, a synth bike. And basically what it is, is you ride around and it's got um, everything you need to make a song on it, like a drum machine, a synth, it's like It's even got a fog horn, it's like a in, in between the wheels. You're pedaling along and how quick you drive, how quick you pedal is how quick the song goes. It's pretty cool. But um, I've built a few of those, that is just um, one, that's Synth Bike Mark. Two, synth bike two uh, out of four or five now. But like, um, yeah. And then, so that's just a little bit of what I do. It's a lot of many, <laughs> I do a lot of uh, machines. I just think it's fun to be able to do things. But like, oh yeah, by the way, I've got my notes on my arm. I'm just double checking. <laughs> But, but the thing is, is like, uh, the, uh, well, let's get back to the thing. I'm supposed to be writing songs here. And like, I was like, I need to write songs. Why have I ended up just doing all of this stuff? And I was like, I'm, I'm not a very, I'm, uh, I wasn't a very productive person. And then I found out that if I had a really important job that I needed to do and I was by myself, I would, do, I would just, for some reason, my brain would just do something else, but loads, like tunnel vision on this certain thing. And I call it something now because I'm turning it into something. And if anybody is stuck with this issue, think of, put this in the back of your head. Strategic procrastination. <laughs> yeah? Think about that for a second. Yeah? You can make it work. You can make it work for you. You can make this lovely procrastinator thing that you have, as long as it's productive in some way, shape, or form, just don't stop yourself from doing it. Uh, you know, if, it's your, if you have an essay to do, screw that essay. If you really want to do this thing and you think it's going to do well and you, you're just going to just do it, whatever. But don't listen to me if it all goes wrong. <laughs> but, like, um, but the thing is, is um, it worked for me because uh, I, my, my mind, this, this thing in this noggin, I've got a dreadful brain, it's really crap. I've got to say, it's like I've been gifted with uh, a fuzzy, noisy, absolutely useless thing inside this, uh, you know, calcium box of calcium stuff. But like, I just, I can't focus on anything. I wake up and I'm like, what am I gonna do today? It's like, I don't know, has anybody got that? Like, am I the only one? Please say everybody else has, but everybody's brain is different, right? And like, um, I need to, I feel that everybody needs to kind of, I, my, my, the last like five years of my life was spent was trying to figure out how to make my brain and how it's rubbishness, how I can make it work in my favor. <laughs> 
how does this noisy stuff work? Well, luckily, I found like um, there's in the noise, there's like you kind of tune in and you get these really focused little chunks, this like weird, like obsessive parts inside your brain. And you're like, I need to use those. I've got no choice but to go down there or I'm just going to be dancing around like a, like a noise thing. That's my, as far as a ballerina, I probably, <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't be a very good one. But, um, but like you just got to focus in and hone in on this and just let your brain go crazy. By the way, I've procrastinated so much that I, I started writing this talk um, on the train here. <laughs> but, but I was trying to, but there was another aspect to um, holding off these large things, these jobs that were still creative. And I still needed to do these regardless, like write these songs and stuff that I need to write. And these things are like creative and it's like... I was trying to work out why I was trying to hold them off so much. Why am I trying to hold off creative endeavors? It's like, ah, that's it. It is the fear of it being crap. Like, that is it. Like, the, the reason why I'm not going in to play that, write that song is I'm scared it's not going to be very good. Like, I'm not going to do anything because of the fear of failure, which is, and the fear of the unknown, which is a really dangerous and annoying trait to, like, cycle to get into, instead of putting so much importance onto it that it's the important job and you're anxious about it, you do the bit that you're not anxious about, which is probably just as creative, but you're not thinking of it as such an important entity, really. So you're like, but, that's, uh, but now I've like, got this mantra for my YouTube channel, it's at the end of the videos, it says, don't be scared to try it. And it's like, out of context, out of context it sounds a bit weird, but in context, it's like... <laughs> It's, it's, it really works because, like, you, if you want to do something and you want to do something creative, uh, you're sitting there like, this is, uh, I don't know, Auntie Mindy, she's like, I'm going to sew one day. I'm going to sew a really, really, really flamboyant scarf. This is her armchair, by the way. Uh, and I, um, she's like, I'm going to sew a really flamboyant scarf, but I'll do it. On, but but her subject, subjective reasoning inside her brain is like, oh, no, you could just put it off. You could just put it off. But she's scared that she's going to be rubbish at it. That's the fact. <laughs> so she needs to dive in and be like, I'm not scared to try this. And I'm going to make this flamboyant scarf, and I'm going to give it to my nephew and, uh, for Christmas, and they're going to wear it and then never wear it again, <laughs> you know? But it's like the mantra of don't be scared to try it, even if you want to make a really flamboyant scarf and your name's Mindy. <laughs> but, but the thing is, is that really how long I've been talking for? <laughs> is it? Oh my God, I've been procrastinating. I didn't realize I was talking for so long and I haven't even started to do my thing. Basically, I was supposed to be, you know, I was supposed to be making these tinfoil pair of pants, but I've been mumbling for so long. So basically what I was going to do is that right here, I've got this machine that I built and it's called a fart box. Basically, this is a very complicated piece of equipment that I spent and designed and it's devoted to making fart noises. Listen to that. That is pure 1960s design and, you know, analog circuitry design completely put into... Oh, it's got, like, settings like Vindaloo mode for a second. Oh, no. Oh, no, Vindaloo mode doesn't work. But, like, it depends how, how dry... If you've got a dry diet or a really wet diet... But it's a shame I couldn't do that because I ran out of time. But this is why you should not procrastinate. But I'll tell you why. <laughs> no, 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 no. But what's that? What's that? The thing is, <clears throat> I was procrastinating from that. But this is where it all boils down to, ladies and gentlemen, is I was procrastinating from this talk. I planned to write this talk about two weeks ago. Yeah? And I was like, oh, I'm, just, I'm going to hold it off. All the time allocated, I decided to make something. And uh, this was my procrastination in this box. So I'll show you it. It's a portable, fur oh, it's a portable Furby organ. <laughs> right, so this thing has taken up all the time. And like literally, I like, was like, I'm gonna, it took a lot longer than I was expecting. I literally finished this yesterday and the paint was still wet when I was getting on the plane. It kind of rubbed the paint off on the plane seat. <laughs> But if I turn them on, and I'm going to turn it up. Oh, is he coming out? Oh, no, I haven't plugged him in. Oh, sorry. But if you get in the right zone... Oh, no. Why is he not coming out? Oh, I haven't... 
put that in. Uh, I've got to plug him in. One sec, Rooney. I'm going to wake him up again. to actually talk at no teach so they're freezing and like their vocabulary is going crazy so <laughs> get all of this onto a real airplane is just amazing to me. <laughs> they didn't even ask a security. They were like, opened it up and they were like, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Sam. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. 